Let's start by looking at some easy examples of how power and cultural work with something that you may have already heard before. It's called The Riddle of Steel and it's from the 1982 movie Conan the Barbarian. The Riddle of Steel. Yes. You know what it is, don't you, boy? Shall I tell you? It's the least I can do. Steel isn't strong, boy. Flesh is stronger. Look around you. There, on the rocks. That beautiful girl. Come to me, my son. That is strength, boy. That is power. So, putting it in terms that Gramsci would agree with, the riddle of steel is the recognition that weapons are nothing compared to the belief of the people that are wielding the weapons. Or, to put it differently, controlling a person's loyalty is the key to power. For Gramsci, power comes from consent, and according to him, it originates in subtle, otherwise innocuous types of agreement. Gramsci further challenges us by suggesting this process is even more complicated than it may first seem by suggesting that people don't control ideas, but rather ideas control people. Or, to put it differently, people don't wield power. Power wields people. Here's an example of this in action. Over in the U.S., we're edging up on the 2016 elections. Elections are a great time to watch hegemony in action. So, take a typical Joe. At some point, Joe will be presented with a political ideology. This ideology will include pleasant-sounding ideas and beliefs, often very vaguely defined, that Joe may agree with. Once Joe decides that he agrees with that ideology or political party, then he'll make all of his political decisions from that point on, not from his own judgment, but from the answers that his political ideology has decided for him.